For the last few months, I've been on a hunt for the perfect travel backpack, a one bag carry solution that will work for short trips or if you're into ultralight gear and super minimal packing, a bag that could even get you round the world. Well, the search is over and I have here what I think is the best travel backpack you can buy right now. That's one small step for man, one giant leap for man. So just to explain, with a travel backpack or a one bag carry backpack, this is your only bag on a trip. So it needs to be able to carry everything you need. You need to be able to chuck it in the overhead locker on a plane, grab it and run, head out into the city, be a digital nomad for a day, head to the beach or take it on a trek. It needs to be able to do everything well. My selection process went like this. I started with a list of must have requirements and then created a short list of six backpacks that fitted the brief. Then I went into deep research town looking at reviews, specifications, user experiences, supplier websites and any other information I could get my hands on. Here is my final shortlist of bags, the Evergood CPL, the GORUCK GR2, the Air Travel Pack 2, the Tom Bean Teconaut, the Minal Carry On 3 and the Able Carry Max. In the end there was only one bag for me that ticked all the boxes and this is it, the Able Carry Max. I purchased this bag four months ago for 259 euros from France as it was out of stock in the UK. So I've had time to get to know it. Also, I wanted to try it on an overseas trip so I could test it properly, which I have just done. Let's talk about size first because that's really important. If it's too big, it means it will get too heavy when it's full and that will slow you down. And there's a danger it won't be accepted as hand luggage on that flight. It won't fit into that cage just before you board. And that for me would be a real problem. Conversely, if the bag is too small, you simply won't get what you need in it. Weight is an obvious factor too. You don't want all your allowed or desired weight to be consumed by the bag itself, ultimately reducing what you can carry. This is a 30 litre pack, which is a good size for this sort of use. Although for longer trips, you'll have to think hard about what you really need with you. You don't really want to go smaller than 30 litres in my view, and bigger means more stuff, more weight, less comfort, and potentially losing the option to hand carry it on a flight. This bag weighs in at 1.7 kilograms, which is 3.8 pounds and not the lightest or the heaviest in my shortlist. Weight is always going to be a compromise like everything, but for me, I'll sacrifice some weight advantage when it comes to increasing strength and durability. Then we have the organization of the bag itself and the various features. It's important that this is right for you as this will dictate how you interact with the bag every day. Each to their own on this one, but for me, I don't want too much organization. I am simply not going to find a separate space or pocket for every single bit of kit. I won't remember where things are or where they need to go and it will slow me down. So I prefer to use packs or pouches to group my gear. I'm going to start with the bottle pocket here. Now, unless the bag is for pure outdoors use, I would rather not see a water bottle pocket hanging off the side of a bag. Now, that's my personal opinion. And therefore, I think this is a great solution. This is a concealed water bottle pocket that will quite happily take a one litre bottle or 32 ounce bottle with no problem at all. The only disadvantage with this approach is that when you've got a bottle in here, it does impinge on the internal capacity of the bag. So you do need to take that into consideration. Although when I'm traveling, as opposed to hiking, I usually carry a relatively small bottle with me as there's usually good access to water. Now on my recent trip to Spain, I've been testing a water bottle and it is the perfect one for travel. And it is this one from Lark. And this content is created in partnership with Lark. So a big thank you to them for sponsoring this video. 
This is called the Lark Bottle Filtered, and as you might deduce from the title, this is no ordinary water bottle. First of all, this is one of the coolest looking water bottles I've seen, particularly in this obsidian black powder coat finish, and this one is the perfect size for me at 500 mil, although larger versions and different colors are also available. This one also has a double lined interior, keeping cold water cold for up to 24 hours. But the real magic is inside. Here we have a filter and it uses something called nano zero filtration technology. There is activated carbon in here with an iron layer designed to trap heavy metals such as lead. So think of those lead pipes which are still in wide scale use as well as chlorine, pesticides, heavy metals, microplastics and the list goes on. And this meets the NSF ANSI 42 and 53 standards. Now I'm not sure what they are but standards sound good to me when it comes to drinking lead. This little filter here filters up to 40 gallons which is over 150 50 litres of water, which equates to about 300 bottles worth. So this is not just about traveling, it's about drinking safer water at home too, improving the taste and reducing the consumption of single use plastic bottles at the same time. Now to me, it looks like this filter takes up quite a bit of space. So I did a quick experiment to see how much water it displaces, which turns out to be only 50 mil, which I was pleasantly surprised to see. And it doesn't stop there. If you're looking at drinking from natural water sources such as streams or very dodgy water supplies, then there's a solution for that too in the form of this Pure Viz cap. And this is sold separately. This thing kills 99.9999% of all harmful bacteria and viruses. And it uses the UVC light technology, which is built into this cap. So this one deals with pollutants and this one deals with biocontaminants. And for total peace of mind, blast with UVC and then use the filter as they are interchangeable. Now, when visiting Spain a few days ago, I was told very hurriedly when filling up my bottle not to drink the tap water. And I could see the fridge was full of bottled water. But in the interests of science and this review, I actually did drink the tap water all the time using this Lark system and all was good and the water tasted fine. In short, I remained hydrated with no Imodium required. So in the case of the Pure Viz, you simply charge this cap through USB and then it works for about a month and it activates automatically every couple of hours with a blast of UV light. And it not only cleans the water, but it cleans the bottle too. So say goodbye to that stinky bottle you left standing around in the kitchen. There's also an adventure mode, which gives it an extra long blast of three minutes. If you're particularly worried about that dead sheep, you've just seen floating about in the river upstream. For me on my trip, this system was ideal. The flip up lid is super convenient and there's a little bit of extra suction needed with this filter, but not much. The tap water stayed cold, even when the bottle was left out in the baking heat as I languished by the pool and I didn't die or get the trots. Links in the description below to find out more about the Lark bottle filtered and the Pure Viz cap and a thank you to them for supporting the channel. And now back to the bag. On the front here, we have a pocket which covers the entire front area of the bag. And there's a little bit of internal organization in here in the form of two elastic vertical pockets of different sizes. There's also some daisy chain webbing in there and attached to that is a removable key carry clip. So I use this recently when traveling to put in the bag of toiletries you need in a polythene bag to show security for quick access, but you could easily fit in there a lightweight waterproof or anything really that you need quick access to. So really nice to see. On the opposite side to the bottle pocket, we have this pocket here and it covers this entire panel area here. We have a double zip here, so you can zip up or zip down. And because this bag doesn't have a quick access top pocket, this effectively becomes that. So great for a mobile phone or sunglasses, things you need to grab in a hurry. I used it on a recent trip to carry my DJI pocket. 
that went in there really well and it meant I could access that in a hurry. So really useful pocket to have. Then on the back here, we have a bit of a secret pocket underneath this flap here. So no one would know that was there is a zip and you pull that and then you've got a pocket in here and it covers about this area here. Now the items in here really need to be flat, but that makes it great for valuables like your passport or a wallet. And the great thing about this is it's pretty much concealed, but even if somebody did know it was there, if you're wearing this bag, there's no way somebody could access this without your knowledge. So this for me is a great place to put valuables where you know they are secure and you know you can access them in a hurry. Then on the back of the bag, we have the laptop pocket, which is really nice. It uses YKK lockable AquaGuard zippers, so it protects against the weather and thieves. And these nylon zipper pulls, which we see throughout the bag, are actually really practical, lightweight, and easy to grab. So let's have a look inside here. And this has some really nice basic organization. The great thing about this laptop pocket is that it's suspended, so it doesn't go all the way to the bottom. So if you are going to drop the bag, you're not dropping your laptop on the floor at the same time. I use a 14 inch MacBook that goes in there really nicely and drops quite far down. Now we've also got an elasticated pocket here for something like an iPad and another elasticated bit there, which would take something like a pen or some other slim item. Then we have the tech pocket here, which is nice to see. Doesn't interfere with the laptop at all because the laptop's dropped down there. So in here you can keep your cables, your charger, your power bank, your SD card, USB stick, that kind of thing. So when you want to get access to your tech, you just need to open this pocket. And then we have another zip here, which normally just accesses the back panel. And most people would think that's all it does in case you want to remove some stiffness out the bag. But actually concealed in here, we have another secret pocket. And it's about the size of a passport. I think there are people using this bag who don't even know this is here. And I've dropped in an air tag, which will be very difficult for anyone to find. And it's just another nice feature of this bag to have that super secret pocket in there. And that brings us to the main pocket. Now it's nice to see Racket Coil number 10 YKK lockable zippers here. They're the sort of zippers you get on heavy duty luggage. So that points to durability and quality. And then inside we have one big open space here, which is what I really like to see. As I've said before, I don't like too much organization because I tend to use packing cubes and pouches to organize my gear. As mentioned before, the bottle pocket does impinge on the main pocket a little bit, as you can see here. It's not a huge problem but it's worth noting. And there is a pouch on this side. That's one of the few bits of organization you get in here, along with some mini daisy chain webbing, if you're the sort of person that likes to uh, attach things to webbing. And there are also a couple of other attachment points on either side, which are probably for some form of bespoke packing cube. So all in all, really simple, big space. It's the way I like it and it works really well. Then in the lid here, we have two pockets. We've got one there with a little bit of volume to it. And we've got one here with a little bit of stretch and breathability to it. And that's pretty much it for the main compartment. And just to show you what I can fit in here, this is what I packed on my recent trip to Spain. And as you can see, I'm using compressible packing cubes. And in this large one here, I've got four t-shirts, two pair of shorts, and would you believe a pair of trousers. And then in this one, I've just got a shirt folded up. And in here, I've got four underpants and four pair of socks. Here we have some flip flops and here we have my toiletry kit. And then we have some other bits and pieces in this pouch here. We have two grab handles here, one on the top and one on the side. And the great thing about these is that they are central to the bag. So when you carry the bag, you don't have that annoying situation where the bag is unbalanced and rubs against your leg when you're carrying it. The handles are not too thick, like you see on some bags, but they are padded and they are really well reinforced along the pack using this bar tack reinforced stitching. 
And that stitching you can find all over this bag, fixing the webbing in place and adding to the strength and durability. There are loads of loops all over this bag. So for example, we have loops here and here. There's one there. We have some here and along the side here and here. And on the harness, we've got them here. And what I like about these loops is, unlike molly webbing, they're quite discreet. And I much prefer that in a travel backpack. As an example of the sort of detail that's gone into this bag, we have this loop here. You don't see this on many bags at all, but this is the sort of thing when you get into, say, a toilet stall, you do not want to put your bag on the floor. This will go on that little hook on the back of the door if you're lucky enough to have one. Now, most bags rely on you using the handle there if they've got one, but that's not ideal. The handle's not at the back of the bag, and if it's a small hook, it's just not gonna work. Whereas that here, is a really nice little addition. It doesn't add anything to the weight. And you can even see we've got this overstitching here, this bar tack stitching, which means this will never pull out. And it's just the kind of level of detail that's gone into this bag. And you can see here, we've also got luggage pass through webbing here. So it can go on your other cases. It can also double up as a grab handle. Then we have comfort. Comfort is vital as you will potentially have to carry this bag for a long time and over long distances. And this bag excels in this department. These straps here are really well padded and really comfortable. They've got a breathable mesh on the back. We've also got a very padded back panel here, again with breathable mesh. And this center panel here is where your spine goes and just makes for a really comfortable carry. And as you'll notice, we've got strap keepers on all the straps and that just stops the straps flapping about. And that's something that a load of bag manufacturers miss and makes such a difference as far as I'm concerned. All the hardware is Duraflex, which means quality. And when it comes to the chest strap, we've got this magnetic fixing. This system I actually really like because even when it's tight on the body, you just need to push it in there and it comes away. So that for me works really well. And if you're the sort of person like me who doesn't like a lot of straps flapping about most of the time, there's even a garage to hide away these chest straps here. So if you wanna just tuck those out of the way, you've got a little bit of space to do it. And then the straps are effectively concealed. There's no waist strap here. And that's not really needed on a bag of this size, I don't think. And I would rather not have more straps and padding to carry around. And then we've got this A-frame webbing system here, <coughs> which means that the webbing goes all the way from the shoulder straps right underneath the bottom of the bag. And that's been cleverly thought out because when you carry it, it feels really comfortable and supported. It doesn't move about unnecessarily, it holds tight. And this is one of the real strengths of this bag over the competition, the fact that they've got this really nice, comfortable system. There's no load lifters here. I don't think they're needed on a bag of this size and weight, particularly one that carries this well. And part of the appeal of this bag is the really clean lines. We have here some very subtle branding from Able Carry in the form of this Hyperlon band in here and that can be used as well as an attachment point. As you can see we've got more bar tack reinforcement stitching at every point where there might be some tension and that is really nice to see and again points to the quality and finish and I can say from experience I carried this bag through airports and walked for miles in the baking heat in Spain and at no time did it become uncomfortable to carry. The quality of the bag and materials used are super important. You don't want the bottom of the bag to drop out when navigating the rainy streets of Bangkok at night on the back of a scooter. And a bag like this needs to be able to cope with all weathers. When it comes to the fabrics used, we have this 1000D Cordura on the base, which is extremely hard wearing and abrasion resistant. Then the rest of the pack uses X-Pack. And if you've not seen that before, it's an extremely durable and lightweight tear resistant fabric, which can be identified by this diamond pattern and was originally designed as sailcloth for high performance sailing boats. There are four colorways available. We've got blue, green, and black, and then this one, which is called Dark Forest. 
The black and the blue use X-Pac VX21 as the main material. That has a polyester bag for waterproofing, the signature reinforced grid, and a lightweight 210 denier nylon surface. The green actually uses X-Pac X42, which is the same, but the surface fabric is 420D. And this one here uses X-Pac X50. It has the same polyester back for waterproofing and the reinforced grid, but the surface layer is 500D Cordura, and that gives it additional strength and structure. You can still see the X-Pac signature grid in the right light, but not as visible as the VX21 or 42 due to this thicker Cordura layer. And I prefer the structural benefits of this material. Also, let's be honest, it has to look good too. Now this is very much in the eye of the beholder and could be why some of you will be giving me grief in the comments right now. No problem with that, we're all different in what we like. And out of all the packs shortlisted, this is the one I like the most in terms of looks. Finally, it needs to be affordable and this means different things to different people. Let's face it, a bag for life would work if price was our only consideration. For me though, within reason, usability takes priority over price. Prices in the shortlist varied from $230 to $415, and this one comes in at $260. So it is actually one of the most affordable. So what we have here with this pack is a great price, great looks, incredible quality and attention to detail, high quality materials, great organization, amazing comfort, ideal size, and a sensible weight. And that is why the Able Carry Max is my pick for the best travel backpack you can buy right now. Let me know in the comments if you think I've got this wrong and do let me know why. And if you want to know what I keep in my toiletry pack when I travel, then you might want to check out this video here. So there you have it. Thank you as always for watching. Have a great day and I'll see you in the next one.